Hey guys, welcome to BitBoy Crypto. I am your host, BitBoy. Today, we've got a lot of news stories to cover. We're going to be talking Elon Musk. We're going to be talking Coinbase, stable coins. We're going to be talking ETF. We're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. Um, but before we do, make sure you are a subscriber to the channel. All you got to do, hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications. And you're part of the Bit Squad. As a Bit Squad member, you can win $500 in Ethereum and merch uh, live stream on December 1st or December 2nd. This will be for October and November. Comment and like on every video during those months to get the maximum number of entries. Okay, guys, let's start by looking at the markets. We're going to kind of have to fly through this stuff because um, there's a lot of news. But $210 billion is the current market cap. Bitcoin dominance of 53.5%. Those two numbers seem like they really haven't changed a lot in a while, which is kind of sad. But uh, Bitcoin down just a hair. It almost hasn't changed at all, which is very interesting considering we've got a lot of news. Um, but Decred was listed on Binance, gave it a huge pump. It's up 30%. We got some big pumpers today, which is very interesting um, because it's about half red and about half green today on the top 100. Then you got Ravencoin that is finally starting to have a correction. Um, Electronium and Metaverse and Veritasium, all 10% losers or more. So first, I want to talk to you guys about ethtweet.me. This is a website that my friends, um, you may know Crypto Sandy from Twitter, and uh, Keith. Keith was the one that helped us with the Mulya coin incident. He was the one that got down to the bottom of, they were using like a sketchy backdoor, which we'll talk about another sketchy backdoor in crypto here in a little bit. But the two of them together, they actually built this etweet.me. And, and the way you can use this is you can actually tweet me or any of these other influencers um, using your ERC20 wallet. And you can actually, as you can see, like he sent me four basic attention tokens, six basic attention tokens. But now what I've actually done is I've actually made it where all the donations that come towards uh, my Twitter handle, at bitboy underscore hodl, now go to freeross.org. So basically, if you give me a tip on Twitter, you're donating to that charity, helping them fight Ross's um, you know, uh, legal bills and stuff like that as they're still trying to appeal and get him out of prison. It, did he deserve some time? Yes, absolutely. Maybe 10 years at the max, but does he deserve like multiple life sentences? No, he, he certainly doesn't. So um, if, if you can get behind that cause and, uh, you know, really help his family out and his situation out, that would be great. And you can do that by using eTweet.me. So you can uh, go to eTweet.me and kind of look around and figure out how it works. If you have any questions, uh, you can tweet me those questions. And this is something I'd be using in the future. If you want to, let's say, like, let's say I ask on Twitter for suggestions for coin reviews and you want me to review a certain coin send me a couple basic attention tokens or any other erc 20s and uh through a tweet and like i said it'll go to charity and then i'll give you priority to do the review that you're requesting so that's kind of how that works let's move on to the news here we got coinbase and circle so i've been telling you guys for a long time that i believe circle is a good company when they come out with a stable coin i think it will be a game changer and now we have that so coinbase and circle announced the launch of the usdc a digital dollar it's actually already active on coinbase i was in coinbase fooling around today and looking at it it's already active um so you can do that on your coinbase app so you have your us dollar wallet now you have your usdc wallet as well so pretty big news guys for um, them to be able to have this and then having another reputable, com uh, reputable company like Circle um, also, you know, just adds to the credibility of this project. So uh, Coinbase made another announcement today that Coinbase Custody has obtained a license under New York State banking law to operate as an independent qualified custodian. Now, with the um, with Coinbase, with the stablecoin, interestingly enough, you actually can't use that if you're in New York because they have different kinds of regulation for crypto. So it was good to see that like they had that bad news about the stablecoin. It can't be used in New York. And they had the good news where um, they now have a license for the uh, qualified custodian, if you will. So back to the stablecoin, though, I want to show you guys this. I saw this earlier on Twitter. And it says, just so everyone is aware, that there is a backdoor in the USDC stablecoin launched by Coinbase today which allows any address to be blacklisted and funds frozen. And this is just a little snippet. It says, Circle reserves the right to blacklist certain USDC addresses and freeze associated USDC uh, that it determines in its sole discretion are associated with illegal activity or activity that otherwise violates the terms of service of user agreement. So very interesting. And I was looking in some of the comments 
And it says right here that's true for all of these U.S. dollar-backed stable coins, except for um, uh, except for Dai. So very interesting. I didn't know this that stable coins had this built-in function. It's similar to what we talked about with Mulia Coin, how they actually have a way that the founders can recall any of the coins back to their addresses. So I don't know. It just it's like the the uh, the legend of the stable coin continues. There just continues to be problems with them. So I'm hoping this is a good reputable one, and I'm certainly not doing any illegal activity. So like it's probably not going to affect me. But we don't know in the future what will be considered a legal activity. So that's what is a little concerning about this. I still tell you guys it's better to just stick with Bitcoin if you believe in Bitcoin and use Bitcoin as a tether, not actually use these stable coins. But, you know, I, I understand for people that are swing trading and things like that, they do need some kind of stable, um, you know, something pegged to a dollar so they can get it in and get out of projects based on whether they rise or fall. So, um, just very interesting that there is this backdoor built in. Um, if anybody knows any more about this, feel free to drop us a comment. So we had Elon Musk made this tweet today and it said, um, want to buy some Bitcoin? And it had this anime character. Supposedly he's really into anime right now. Um, I don't know why what I, what I read said right now. Maybe it's a new thing for him. But the, the really interesting thing is Twitter actually uh, suspended his account because they thought that that was a hacker that had gotten his account. So it just, it, it, it's a little weird to me that Twitter automatically assumes if some famous rich guy suggests people buy Bitcoin that he's hacked or something like that. So it, it's just people continue to put cryptocurrency in this negative light. And I think this story kind of does that as well. It also shows you guys how closely Twitter monitors these larger accounts. So CZ actually responded to this and he told Elon Musk that if he were to allow CZ to buy a Tesla with Bitcoin, that he would buy one. So now the question is, will Elon Musk accept that offer? Will he figure out a way to accept crypto for Tesla? I think that's a great idea for him. Who knows? Maybe Tesla will be the new Lambo. But I still want a Lambo. I don't really want a Tesla. Um, that, that's not my style. I don't want a flipping sedan. Sorry, guys. So anyways, um, moving on, we've got the, uh, this is a story about the ETF. So breaking Bitcoin SEC ETF meeting, CBOE, Van X, Solid X, all meet with SEC Commissioner Elad Roisman, approval confidence high. So they came out of this meeting feeling like this is going to get approved. I believe most people feel like it is going to get approved. It's just a matter of time. So we'll just have to see what that actually means. We've kind of heard the same song and dance a million times. So I'm not really putting too much into this story, but later on this month, the nine ETF requests or applications that were previously um, denied are once again going to be up for approval again because they allow them, even though they got denied, to be reopened. So these are some of the smaller ETFs. So we'll just have to see at the end of the month if any of those get approved. If any of them get approved, then that will probably be really good news because people consider CBOE to be the best application out there. So then we have this little story here. CNBC, Brian Kelly, key players will be suffering from institutional FOMO. This is something that he said a few different times. This is not the first time he's basically said this exact same thing. But my, my thing is, institutions don't really traditionally FOMO. I think they would probably be more likely to wait for the next bear market, even if it goes up to $100,000. Like, if Bitcoin were to go to $100,000 on its next run, which I believe is possible, I don't think it's probable, I think forty dollars to $50,000 is much more likely uh, I do feel like whenever we get on a bull run, we will at least touch all-time highs again, but we may not. So um, I, I think it's probably more likely that we don't touch all-time highs than it were to go all the way to $100,000, but it certainly is a possibility that we could see. Um, and even if that happened, if we went all the way up to $100,000, you can bet that thing's going to probably drop back down to like $30,000 in the next bear market. So I think these institutions would be more likely to just wait, do what they always do, swoop in when all the blood is on the street. Because guess what, guys? We will have another bear market. It's been really hard making all of my videos in the bear market and not really in a bull market because I started my channel after the bull run was officially over. But 
I, I had hopes. I thought it was going to go back up, but it didn't. So it's been really hard making these videos consistently. As you guys know, a lot of YouTubers have really fallen off with their content due to, is we just have to talk about the same stuff all the time, but I'm really committed to making content on the channel. And this is my full-time job. So, hey, I, I got the time to do it. Um, but the whole thing is, once we have another bull run, it'll be really fun making videos again. I can't wait. Like, it'll be really, really awesome. But then it'll end too. So um, hopefully it will Hopefully it will be at least six months or more that we'll have a bull run instead of, you know, just about two or three really good months we had last time. But that's what Bitcoin has traditionally done is when it rises, most of its rises are in a very small, um, you know, window of time. Like I think it went from six to 20 last year in like 30 days. So take that for what it is worth. I'll probably be making like 10 videos a day during a bull run. I'll be so excited. But anyways, guys, that's all I got for you tonight. Check out eTweet.me. I'm not shilling it. I'm not paid for this. All of it's going to charity. It's just these guys are friends of mine, and I really believe in what they're doing. So you guys, make sure you go check that out. And until next time, BitBoy out.